Welcome to Gold Derby. I'm senior editor Denton Davidson here with Laura Dave and Josh Singer, the creators and executive producers of the Apple TV Plus series, The Last Thing He Told Me, starring Jennifer Garner. Laura, I'm going to start with you. You wrote the novel that the series is based on, and the show premieres April 14th, so we don't want to give too much away, but you know what can we expect from the series um, that stars Jennifer Garner in the lead role, and where did that inspiration for these characters come for? Because you go back you know, years with this story now as the original author of the novel. Yeah. Well, um, you know, you can expect that, you know, when Josh and I sat down to write it, what I will say, and I don't think this is too much of a spoiler, but um, we really wanted the show to feel like a call and an answer. So the very first line of the show is um, Hannah calling out to Bailey. And we moved everything in an arc uh, to get to the very last line and what the answer to that call is. Um, so that was really how we always imagined uh, the series to operate, um, which uh, was a way of uh, creating sort of the what we hoped was um, the love story that we saw in the book. You know, when I started writing the book, I thought I was writing one kind of love story, a love story between Hannah and her husband who goes missing. But what I realized, you know, several years into the writing um, was when I took my 97,000 word draft and threw out 77,000 words um, and began again, essentially, was I was telling a different kind of love story. I was telling a love story of Hannah and her new stepdaughter. Um, and we really wanted to also honor that story in, in the series. And Reese Witherspoon selected the novel for a book club and then eventually, mm -hmm. you know, optioned the rights for the TV show. Mm -hmm. um, and I'm curious, what was that like for each of you? Was that sort of, had you envisioned making this into a series all along or was that a surprise? What was that process like? You know, it's funny because in our heads, when we were starting the, down this path, we really thought this was going to be a movie. Uh, we had uh, adapted, uh, worked on uh, one or two of Lars' other books as movies, uh, and we thought we would try to do that as a movie as well. And Hello Sunshine came to us, and they essentially said, no, we think this is a six, seven episode limited. And Lars and I sat down one night, uh, you know, right after we heard that, and we're like, huh, that's interesting. And we sort of walked through the book. And first of all, we realized, well, we've got some really great episode outs, right? <laughs> the, the book naturally, you know, it's so well plotted and there's some real natural great. And we we're like, oh yeah, this is six or seven. And the other thing I realized was cramming this all into a movie is going to be really challenging. Yeah. Um, there's just so much story here. And moreover, there's an ability to expand a little bit if you do it as a, as a limited um, and so we we very much uh, you know got in line with the idea of it being unlimited. And you know I, I had basically said to Laura, I said, look, if I'm helpful to this, great. And if I'm not helpful, that's fine too. You know, I'd love to be involved, but I certainly have uh, other things uh, to do if if that's not helpful. And it turned out that um, Hello Sunshine wanted me involved, and Laura wanted me involved, and so we sort of went down the path together. I was I was curious about that because you've been working mostly in film. You have experience in television, Josh, um, but you've been working really in a lot of film. Of course, you won your Oscar for Spotlight. Um, you know, what's the key then to taking a novel and, and bringing it into a TV script like this? And is it very different for you to work on something like that versus an original screenplay? Um, well, I'd say the key is good partners. Uh, and the first one is sitting right beside me. Uh, it's really wonderful when you have a compass, right? When you have true north. Um, and so Laura was key to that. And we had a wonderful group of writers, uh, one of which had gone to UT, who brought a lot of other things to the table for us uh, as we were, we, were, we were moving through. I would say for me, you know, I was hired into this industry by John Wells, uh, who gave me my break uh, writing for the West Wing. And those three years, learning from John and Lawrence O'Donnell and Peter Noah, I mean, you just had this cavalcade of incredible writers. Uh, Deborah Kahn, who's got a show coming out uh, this month, too. Uh, you know, and I just learned so much from them. And so it was really about, I literally would ask myself on a regular basis, what would John do? 
what would John Wells do, right? Uh, which I think a lot of people who work with him wind up asking themselves. And I think with that sort of compass, you know, in terms of how to make a television show and with, you know, the real compass next to me, it wasn't, wasn't, it, it was smoother than I thought it would have been. And Laura, for you, what's it like to share this? Because this is yours. I mm -hmm. mean, and then what's it like to sort of allow other people to, to not only work on this series with you, but you don't like, you have other writers working on other yeah. episodes. So just to allow some of that freedom out of your hands, I feel like would be tough. Was yeah. it or, or not? Well, you know, I think probably because the novel had so many iterations that what defines this novel for me is as much what I threw out as what I kept that all along I was killing my darlings, like for years and years. And yeah. some of the things I thought I could never let go, like the original ending that I had for the first four years I was working on it, I was holding onto that ending so tight, you would think my life depended on it. And I let that go. So by the time it came to adapting it, I was like, please, God, other people, come on in. Let's all do this together. Let's get in the water together. And I think that that is the, the only attitude if you're making a TV show, the nature of which is so collaborative. And um, I feel very lucky about our collaborators. We could not literally have had a better number one in Jen Garner who cared so deeply about every word and every page and had the book and had all the different... You know, her book looks like a, I mean, I've never seen anything like it. It had um, stickets on every page and lines and she wanted to, and she would come to our backyard and we would read through and Josh does this great thing, which. Um, well, I, I, I started, I started, uh, you know, so, so I've been working for, uh, and this is where I think film and television really speak to each other. You know, I've been working for the last four years uh, on uh, this script about Leonard Bernstein with Bradley Cooper and. Bradley loves to sit and read through the script. You know, just the two of us sit together. We must have done that dozens and dozens of times. We have like hundreds of drafts. And I'd never done that before, but I was like, wow, this is really useful. This is really helpful, right? And so, you know, I said to Jen, hey, would you be up for this? And so she came to our backyard. And before we even started shooting, you know, we sat and we read through all of the scripts and we were able to listen to the scripts and tweak them and play with them and hear her voice. And we were able to talk about the scripts and get great input from her. And then we brought in Gary Rice on board and we did the same thing. And a couple of the other actors joined us and it was incredibly useful as a process. And it speaks to, look, Jen's a wonderful actor. And I actually think, and you know, she's done career best work here, which is saying something given the career she's had. Um, but, you know, she's also a wonderful collaborator, right? And, you know, from her to Aisha, to Ann Gowry, to Nikolai, to David Morse, to Josh Hamilton, we had Augusta, we had wonderful collaborators across the board in our actors, in our producing partners, Hello Sunshine, you know, our directors. Uh, it really was a team effort and we all pulled in the same direction, which is kind of wonderful. Yeah. Watching the first episode it is it pulls you in immediately i mean this is a thriller oh. that will suck people in so people are gonna love it for everyone out there ready um but it doesn't happen in like a fast-paced new no. york it's in salsalito you're mm. a floating house these people are well off um what inspired that backdrop for this story and why is hannah like this woodworker mm. and you know it's it's she's she's an artist and she's married to this high profile tech guy, mm -hmm. you know, what, what inspired that for you? Well, for me, the floating home community was a character as early as Hannah was a character. I was enamored of this floating home community. I like writing about communities on the edge of the world in some way, because I think they require something really different of their inhabitants. And, um, and that creates an interesting sort of fodder for how the characters interact with each other. Also, without giving anything away, if you want to hide somewhere, it's a very interesting place to hide. Because whereas there's real estate records, if, if you buy a house in LA, the way that the real estate works in those floating homes is you're really kind of leasing the slip underneath your boat. It's complicated, but all of which is to say, if you were looking for someone and you were using real estate records to find them, it would be quite complicated to find them there. So I love the idea of putting 
them in this little insular world in that way. Um, and we wanted purposely for it to feel so incredibly different and quiet and slow from where the show is going to go and where Hannah's going to have to go in order to save them to suggest that even starting in this idyllic um, enclave where she's surrounded by hope and sort of beauty, that she has something she really wants to get back to. And what is she going to do in order to get back there? And she also has this tension with a 16-year-old. Oh, yes. Who, we know how that can, can be. Yes. Um, what is... Why did you want to bring that into the story? Because um, that's a, a very interesting part of it, is, mm -hmm. is her just trying to get along with this stepdaughter. Well, Bailey sort of appeared for me um, in a way that was surprising. Early on, I thought I was telling, uh, as I mentioned, I thought I was telling the love story of Owen and Hannah. And I knew he had a daughter, but I didn't know how critically important that story would be until I had my own child in 2016. And then I realized, oh my goodness, this is the primal story of someone finding their way to parenthood. All the different ways one may find their way to parenthood, you know, um, to people they have nothing to do with giving birth to, to people they might not even parent, but who just really need them. And I wanted to honor it's almost an ode, I would say, to found families, however you navigate them, however you find the way to the people that you're going to count on to answer the door when you need someone there the most. What creative things did you two disagree on the most? <laughs> oh. We should mention, I don't know if, if people watching, if everyone knows you're married. Yeah. So maybe I should mention that. Just, just in case. Well, we wrote this, we wrote the pilot and then um, worked with the writers during the pandemic without childcare. So one of the things we disagreed on the most was after we worked all night. Who has to wake up? Who has to, to get up with the kid. kid? And that was a real argument. It was a real like, this is 5 a.m. and we are both tired to the bone. Who did more and the other one has to get up? Like, you know, so um, we did that. And also I think, what I do think is really nice is that we both care deeply about the things we cared about. And sometimes they were different things like, you know, and so in that way we could divide and conquer. Like Josh has this beautiful way because, you know, he's been doing this for so long of making everything sort of cinematic and being very macro about world creation. And I like to start with the micro and sort of the dialogue and the small moments. So we almost got to both, it was almost like a zone on zone defense. Um, forgive my sports metaphor, I should never talk about sports, I don't know what I'm talking about. But like, you know, we cared about different things and it allowed us to work from different angles and sort of meet in the middle. I will say I wouldn't necessarily recommend everyone works with their spouse, <laughs> but I would highly recommend working with my spouse. Uh, I think he's, I think he's pretty special. Yeah. It's, you know, I, I, I think, you know, one of the things that, you know, show running is a impossible job. It's funny because, you know, having worked with some really great directors, uh, and, you know, I, I've been in awe of them for a long time, but you know, when you're directing a movie, you get to prep it, and then you get to shoot it, and then you get to post it. And it's only two hours, right? When you're show running a television show, you wind up in a position where you're prepping and produce and and producing and posting all at the same time. And you're dealing with seven hours, you know, or eight hours or 10 hours. It's really challenging. And so that was where it was fantastic to have someone who not only shared a brain about the show, but was was had a had a keener intuition about certain things. So we also divided and conquered there. You know, uh, I- well, I just thought of something we had an argument about. What's that? So in the finale, <laughs> we were, my one of my favorite parts was editing because editing feels like writing. And in the finale, in the very last scene, we were in the scene. We did like a little cameo. And, <laughs> and I voted that we should be cut. Because there was a, our, our director on the finale, Livy no Newman, had this beautiful shot. And if we opened on that shot, our little entrance couldn't be in there. And so we cut, we ultimately agreed that 
so so this was not really a disagreement so much as Laura went in with Trevor, our editor, and, and cut it. Yeah. And then I saw it and I was like, <laughs> you know, yeah, it's probably better that way. But I realized it was really comeuppance because Laura had a speaking role in Spotlight. Uh, which I had a little role in cutting. Yeah. And so uh, she right. was just getting me back Correct. is what she was doing. <laughs> um, but what I was starting to say is one of the wonderful things is, you know, I spent a lot of time on set. I love watching performance. I love working with our directors. We had wonderful directors, Libby Newman, Denise gomes Ergevin, Denise D Daisy Mayer, Lila Neugebauer. I love collaborating with directors and being on set. You know, Laura had such a vision for look and feel, right? And so she spent a lot of time with Chris Brown, our production designer. When you see that houseboat, it it, it captures the same wish fulfillment, I think, that Livy managed to capture, you know, in shooting Sausalito, which is so crucial because that's what ultimately is on the table in terms of what might be sacrificed at a certain point in the show. And so, you know, and she just had such a vision for that. And so it was one of these wonderful things of dividing and conquering. Well, it's beautiful to look at. It's a thriller. It sucks you in from the second you start. So congratulations on this. It starts streaming on Apple TV Plus April 14th. Everyone go check it out. And best of luck to you um, with the series, with the upcoming Emmys. You know, hopefully they're calling your names. We'll get you there. And um, thanks for chatting with Gold Derby today. Thank you thanks so much. much.